So real quick, what are we talking about today? Um, we'll talk just a little bit about what is Team Thrifty and, and the beta test process. Um, we'll talk about two of the devices that we have had the opportunity to get some hands-on time with. That's the Nova brushless motor controller um, and the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the robot. Uh, that's what they said it, not me. Um, and then we'll also just briefly highlight uh, some of the other Thrifty products that you see up here. We do have a table set up in the pits with all of this, so uh, don't worry if you don't get a chance right after this to, to get hands-on. It'll be set up there all weekend. You can come play with it, spin the Thrifty Swerve because it's really cool, uh, and, and check it out. And get some stickers because you know, who doesn't like cool Thrifty stickers? All right, so just a, a little pre precursor here. Uh, the disclaimer, we are we were sponsored by the Thrifty Bot this year. This is not a Thrifty sales pitch. I'm not pitching you to, to buy these things. We're just talking about them. Um, so Team Thrifty is just a, a collection of teams sponsored by the Thrifty Bot. There's a few of these out in FRC. There's like Team Rev, West Coast Products. Uh, really, it's just a, a group of teams sponsored by one of the FRC vendors. Um, and there's sometimes an opportunity to connect with those suppliers, give feedback. So uh, we've enjoyed uh, being able to engage some of the other Thrifty teams this year. One of those opportunities is to uh, beta test some products. So as I mentioned, we've gotten some beta hardware of the uh, electronics here, um, some, some beta firmware and test config software. So we've set these up. We've used our kit bot that we built uh, at the start of the season um, to swap out the motor controllers. Uh, we actually have the mitochondria installed on our competition robot right now, uh, powering all five of our limelights off of it. So uh, we'll check, check back in at the end of the weekend uh, to see how the testing goes. Um, but we get to set these up, test them out, uh, and then send feedback to Thrifty. They take that. Um, they've pushed out already on the motor controller, like four or five different firmware updates. Um, so, And then we just work with them and collaborate. Um, this is a really cool opportunity. So my day job, I'm in new product development. Um, and this is it's, it's very close parallels to that, working with the students to come up with a test plan. What do we need to test? Both just kind of the basics and putting it to the extremes. How do we run the test, document it, provide that information so it's very clear to someone who wasn't there for testing. Um, so it's a really great experience for the team and the students as well. Microphone change. We have great technology except for only two microphones. Oh, man. Um, so this is our Nova motor controller. It can be used with either a Neo or a Neo 550. Um, it is powered via the two pre-installed 12 gauge wires and has your spur pin um, can that's compatible with your rev can. It has a circular design, which is potential for future mounting on the back of your Neos. And the case is not balanced. They're thinking of making it metal for better heat dissipation. And there's a 10 pin data port to plug the spark mats for the absolute encoder, crowd voucher encoder, forward and reverse limit switch, and the analog input. Um, and then it also has a USB C port for data, the Thrifty uh, config tool, and the two status light LEDs that shows motor direction and fault codes. Um, they also showed off these two boards at Champs. Um, this one is a slider board where you can. Um, plug it into the data port and turn the motor on and off and control the speed without connecting it to the PC. And then the breakout board which shows the status LEDs for the encoder, limit switches, and analog sensors. The, uh, the slider board there is pretty neat. Um, as Bowen mentioned, they had it at Champs. This is, uh, I'm sure other teams do this. We've got like off the shelf PWM generators plugged into like a old, old, old spark. Uh, it's a big hefty box, and so being able to just plug this little board on if you want to test a prototype, do some diagnostics on your robot, it's pretty cool. All right, so for the software of the Nova, uh, we tested different API calls by installing our two Nova, Thrifty Nova beta controllers onto our kit bot. Um, we tested several different functions. Uh, the motor is able to uh, use PID. Uh, inbuilt PID control. It's able to use a uh, voltage control mode. Um, you can read current, you can read voltage, you can read uh, speed, um, and all of that. Uh, and essentially, uh, from that, we reported uh, any issues we encountered, any uh, good things back to ThriftyBot. 
and uh, overall, I would say that the Nova is a good motor controller. It's good. Uh, so I would say, uh, comparing it to some others in similar controllers, uh, we have, uh, I, I would say it's very, very similar to a Spark Max. Um, in terms of functionality, uh, it's, I wouldn't say quite as capable as a Talon, at least not in the beta phase. Uh, however, overall, it was a good controller, yes. Uh, you test it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, sure enough. So if you if you have used uh, Spark Maxes um, or even the Talons, it's very similar functions, right? To be able to set some of the parameters, get the speed, you know, set output. It's it's not going to be anything radically different. Um, as for the config software, it's up to standard. Uh, the I would say the best thing about it, at least from my perspective, was firmware updates. It makes those very quick and easy. Um, and then uh, as for the running software, uh, let me switch the slide here, uh, it's exactly what you'd expect out of software like this. Um, it lets you do PID and speed controls, uh, all of that, everything you'd expect from this. Um, yeah, similar to the rep client as far as you can you know, set everything control. You can see it's uh, version 0 0.1, so it's still very early software. I'm guessing that the software launching with these is going to look pretty different from this. But uh, as Keegan mentioned, for updating firmware real quick and easy, um, and then uh, being able to just plug it in and you know, zip the motor back and forth is, is minutes to get that up and going. So the matter of Candria, as, it, as they advertise, it's the power of the robot. They bug boost regulator that provides 10 amps at 5 volts, which gives you a total of 50 watts. Uh, your voltage input range is from 4.5 volts to your boost voltage. There's a CAN connection for your monitoring and control. And the boost rail is configurable from 15 to 24, which is your boost voltage. Then the mass board draw is 120 watts. So if you wanted to use that boost output for something else, you wanted to buck that down to 12 volts, let's say, or power some other equipment, you can control what that is, and then that's where the, the total between the five volts and that boost output uh, recommended is 120 watts. Um, so also has two switchable five, five volt oils that are either with Wagos or Brett solder, and then two non-switchable USB-Cs, and the adjustable one for either Wago or Brett solder, and then of course the USB-C, um, it's configured with grapple hook, and they say the 50 config is coming soon. Um, so if you can grapple hook, they, you're able to switch, uh, enable or disable the 5 volt rails and adjust the amount of voltage on the adjustable port. And um, the configuration saves over power cycles. Yeah. Um, as for the software, uh, it provides API calls to configure individual channels, as you would be able to do with something like the PDH. Um, it allows you to get current, you can set or get voltage, you can adjust the voltage, well, uh, you can set or get the voltages for the adjustable channels, they're switchable channels, it allows you to switch the, those on and off, uh, and yeah, that's your API. Pretty straightforward. Um, it's nice for being able to monitor the stuff, to, to read that out, make sure that uh, just that it's outputting as you expect, read that voltage. Um, you could do some diagnostics, like if you're expecting your controllers to take, or your cameras, let's say, to take a certain amount of currents, and you're seeing a big spike there, could indicate a wiring issue or a device malfunction. Um, so that uh, is, it's nice uh, to have some of these more, um, from first vendors, the power regulator modules. Um, there was a, some discussion earlier this season of teams that were having issues where they would get voltage spikes into their limelight, and that was blowing it up. Um, so being able to power stuff off of a regulated module that can go up really high as well as down so that as your battery dips, you're not browning out and cutting out on your cameras or sensors or anything else. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the other stuff going on here. Um, the new shiny thrifty swerve, as I mentioned, we've got one. We'll have it in the pits. You can take a look and play and feel with it. Um, so this is a 100% uh, gear driven, which I don't know if any of the others in the in the mass production is today. Most of them run a belt to their their azimuth, their steering. Um, so it's all gears. 
Uh, it's pretty neat. Definitely take a look at the, the main steering gear there. It's a hybrid of aluminum and steel. So it's got steel outer ring for the teeth to be strong. And then it's got an aluminum center that is for lightweight. Um, so it's pretty neat. Uh, there's also uh, different gear ratios. You can swap those out without taking the entire module apart, which is a big bonus. Um, they do have options right now uh, for Kraken's spline access and the eight millimeter keyed for Neo, Vortex, et cetera, uh, for both steering and drive. Um, and those are, uh, these are available right now for pre-order on Thrifty's website. $299, which is a pretty competitive price point for swerve modules, um, a little bit less than a lot of the others that are in the market today. Uh, that includes the full module and gear set, um, a four inch uh, billet wheel, and then right now that does include the Thrifty Absolute uh, mag encoder on there as well that you see picture. Um, it does not include the motors themselves, which is common. Uh, it also doesn't include tread on the wheel. Thrifty does sell neoprene. You can buy that to put on. You could 3D print. Some teams are starting to do 3D printed TPU. Uh, or you can just throw the whole wheel away and 3D print the whole wheel, uh, like some crazy teams. Uh, lots of numbers. I'm not going to read every number on here. Uh, really, this is just a, a big eye chart to compare all the different ratios. Um, we've got rev max swerve up in the top left, uh, swerve drive specialties mark 4i in the top right, west coast swerve x bottom right, and then thrifty bottom left. I've just highlighted uh, for both the vortex and krakens, what's the max speed? We want to go fast, as fast as possible. That's, that's the name of the game. Uh, so you can see the thrifties there, their max goes up to uh, 19.8 for the Vortex, 20.4 feet per second for the Kraken, um, and those are pretty much in line with what you're going to find at any of these other vendors. Uh, nothing too earth-shattering different from those. Um, and as we mentioned, I believe all those, all of the gear sets come with the module, so you can swap in and out. Uh, if you it's going a little too fast, you can swap that down and, and, and rein it in. But it's never too fast. All right, um, we'll talk about a couple other of the products that Thrifty uh, showed at Champs and, and should be coming out uh, in the near future. One of those is the, the FlexiCan. Um, so it's a essentially a core that is CAN enabled and allows for the development and the addition of other modules on top of it. So pictured here um, is on the right there is the, the FlexiCan. That's got CAN wires, it's got USB-C, it's got the processor on it. And then on the left is an LED matrix board. And you can see from the far left picture there, they basically like sandwiched together uh, with little uh, high density connectors. And so the idea of this is that with the same core, you can easily spin up new sensors, LEDs, different boards without having to deal with the CAN communication and, and all of that good stuff. Um, and so I believe that Thrifty's intent is to uh, you know, release the information that other companies or even teams uh, could develop this. I know some of the teams even uh, here in Wisconsin develop their own boards for interfacing, for CAN, for power, whatever. Um, and so this could be an opportunity too for teams to design their own board of whatever they want and then plug it in and not have to mess around, you know, learning the CAN, uh, CAN protocols and get that to work. A couple other electrical products that were there. Um, the laser CAN, that's uh, the, the bottom left there. So that is a LiDAR distance sensor. Um, if you use like playing with fusions, time of flight sensor, very similar, um, can enabled. You can use it for distance to, to get distance uh, away from an object, or you can also just kind of use it as like a beam break sensor. We've used the, the playing with fusion version quite a bit on our robots. Um, we prefer that just because it's you run can wires up, you don't have to run separate wires down to your, your RoboRio digital IO. Um, it's pretty nice, uh, just kind of once you get it set up, it's, you don't have to worry about it. And then the CAN encoder, shown on the right there, um, relative and absolute. If you are familiar with CTRE's CAN coder, very, very similar concept here. Um, again, great for swerve. You're already running CAN out to the two motors that are on uh, the drive and azimuth. You can just daisy chain your CAN right to this CAN encoder. Um, we use the CTRE ones. Definitely will ch check out the uh, thrifty ones once they're released. All right. And then uh, lastly, touching on um, some of the other hardware products. Uh, we've got a couple of them here, uh, as well as in the pit. Um, so they've got some sprockets, uh, small ones, uh, a lot of your common sizes from seven up to 17 tooth, 
25 and 35 chain, um, both for half inch hex, 3 8 8 millimeter keyed, uh, just a nice variety there. Um, the big plate sprockets, uh, you can get all the way up to, Keegan, you want to hold up the big silver one? Like, all the way up to really big. If you're a uh, round table and you want to make a really big sprocket arm, uh, Thrifty is the place for you. Uh, you've got those. And then if you need some extra strength, you hold up the black big one. We even have uh, billet sprockets, which are uh, have those ribs on there for increased strength. Um, they've got that, again, going up really, really, really big. So those are pretty cool. Uh, new sprocket offering from Thrifty. Um, also, they've got uh, some pulleys that are going to be coming out. So small ones, pinions uh, for Neos, Falcons, Krakens, um, as well as uh, some larger size HCD 24 and 36 with a hex core. Or up to 48. You want to hold the big sprocket or big pulley? That one, yeah. Like all the way up to the, the big 48 tooth um, with a bearing mount. So again, if you need a pivot point for an intake or an arm, you can do that. Um, and one of the things that uh, they have specifically mentioned is the flanges on this. Uh, I almost would, like, I can't tell you how many times we've snapped a flange off of a, a metal pulley to the point where I think we 3D print all of them now because they just are stronger. Uh, or we have to slap big pieces of polycarb as our fake flanges on there. Um, and so I saw a picture of uh, 5010 running like one of these and it was just grinding against their robot for like champs and IRI and that flange was still on there. So definitely something that I'm excited to take a look at is the improved strength of the, of the flanges there. All right, so uh, just a recap, we've got some mechanical stuff, we've got the electrical things, we'll gladly take some questions now, but we'll also have these out in the pits uh, if you want to take a look later. But any immediate questions for any of us here? Stone silence. For the lower controllers, I guess, what is like the yeah, essence benefit of using like the uh, low probe over like uh, the talon or the I would say its primary benefit is ease of use, ease of installation. All of the software is really streamlined and everything. It's very nice to use. Uh, and then, if anybody has yeah, it's uh, to some extent it's going to be right. You can kind of just pick pick anyone, and they're all going to have a lot of the same features to it. Um, really, from the the shape of this, right? I think Thrifty's uh, thinking of trying to make this maybe a hybrid where it snaps onto the back of a motor. And so that could be a, a plus if they, you know, in their final production version, it mounts on, nicer packaging. Um, and then just it turns into uh, software support as well, right? Rev's got software, CTRE has software that can do different, different ways of doing control loops or, you know, being able to read values back. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it's going to be what, what makes sense for teams to use. I wouldn't say like throw all your other motor controllers away and spend all the money to buy new ones, but if you're in the market for some new motor controllers, uh, this looks like it's a, a strong offering compared to the rest as well. Any other questions? So you'd be able to add like some of these to, like you could also use the Spark Max or something like that too. You could just use this on a part of your, like if you're using it for your mechanism or something like that, you could use this bag for that. Yep, absolutely. But what, what kind of, what controllers do we have on uh, Kitbot right now that we put these on? We got, uh, is that for drivetrain too? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so we've got sparks on, on our Kitbot that we had. We just, we basically took two sparks out and plugged these two in. And, you know, after getting the, the software updated, we were good to go. And I will say for the software, the code was incredibly easy to update for me. It was pretty much a drop-in replacement. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any other questions right away? All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Feel free to, looks like we've got a little bit of time before our next presentation. So if you'd like, feel free to come up and get hands on with this, grab some stickers, um, and then we'll get set for the next workshop. Thank you.